Hello, everybody. My name is Mary O'Sullivan. And I'm an economist and a historian based at the University of Geneva in Switzerland. And today, what I've decided to talk to you about the work I've been doing that is at the intersection between history and economics, the two disciplines that have captured my imagination. And I'm going to talk about the history of economic crisis as academic fiction and political drama. Now, on March the 26, 2020, in the face of the COVID-19 pandemic, the governor of the US Federal Reserve System, Jerome Powell, made an extraordinary declaration. We're not going to run out of ammunition, he told Americans, signaling that the central bank stood ready to take any action necessary to stem the mounting economic crisis. Only three months later, the Fed had injected nearly $3 trillion of liquidity into the US economy with the aggregate assets of the group of 10 central banks increasing by about $6 trillion over the same period. A such bold action by the world's richest central banks became a new normal in the financial crisis of 2008-2009. And as you can see here, it reached unprecedented heights already during that crisis compared to the rest of the 20th century. In the face of the global health crisis, however, it has soared to heights that are still greater than what we saw during the global financial crisis. And naturally, it has drawn, when you see such radical monetary interventionism, it has drawn reactions from the left and the right, criticisms of the implications of what we call quantitative easing for income distribution, for bubbles on the stock market, and also for the value of money. But perhaps more striking than the objections that have been raised to this kind of policy is that so many prominent economists and economic historians have rallied in support of central banks' bold actions. Indeed, many of them have cast quantitative easing as a sine qua non in responding to economic crisis, to any crisis, even one as different from past crises as the virus crisis seems to be. Now, at a time when medical experts could not agree on whether a vaccine would offer sustained immunity, how could economic experts be so confident that central banks were doing the right thing? Their remarkable certainty offers a string we can pull to unravel a story about how past economic crises inform our understanding of present crises. Several decades ago, academic specialists became trapped in a historical orthodoxy about the Great Depression of the 1930s that deflected our attention, just as it was intended to do, from capitalism's inherent tendency to crisis. In the early 21st century, that orthodoxy burst into the policy sphere during the global financial crisis of 2008-2009, and it is being played out again during the coronavirus pandemic. <laughs> 